Hello, welcome to the Ask the Doulas podcast. I am Alyssa and I'm here with Kristen today. Hey. Hello. And we decided to chat about sleep and during COVID and kids going to school because she texted me the other night with a specific question um, regarding her daughter Abby in school. So do you want to tell me what your specific question with Abby was? Yes, so we were transitioning from summer sleep schedule to back to school, but my kids um, are in school virtually until at least late October, so they don't get up as early to go to the bus, and Abby was trying to negotiate a later bedtime based on what some of her friends were doing with virtual school. So since, of course, you're the sleep expert... And Abby's how old? Abby is in fourth grade, so she will be 10 in late January. And of course, she thinks she's nearly an adult, so why not exactly. stay up late, she's right? so mature <laughs> compared to her brother, who's right. in second grade. And she wants to stay up later than Seth, of course, but I actually have always had them on the same sleep schedule for school, so... Yeah, I mean, the difference between 7 and 10 years old for sleep is not any different. They still need, um, I mean, generally 11 hours that night. Yes. Some kids need less, some kids will need more. And you'll know it. If your kid needs 12 hours of sleep at night and they're only getting 10, they'll be exhausted during the day. But if you're trying Mm -hmm. to force 12 or 13 hours of sleep on your kid who only needs 10 or 11, um, they will ultimately just stay awake in their room for two extra hours. Yeah. Um, I mean, the biggest takeaway for sleep, adults or children, is to have a schedule. Um, our bodies work on a natural circadian rhythm that flows with when the sun rises and the sun sets, mm-hmm. and then eating at certain times of the day, and then having social activities throughout the day. Right. And your body just sets its own rhythm. And if you try to get up at 7 o'clock some mornings and then try to sleep in until 9 o'clock other mornings and then some nights you go to bed at 10 and some nights you go to bed at 1 o'clock in the morning, right. your body, it just kind of wreaks havoc on this rhythm that your body wants and needs right. and you're not letting it happen. Um, so then we find that you'll have days where you're tired and you need to take a nap. Um, and naps can be great, but if you yeah. find you have to take naps every single day, it can actually lead to worse sleep at night, which then you say, oh, now I have insomnia and I can't get to bed at night. Right. Um, but it's true. really important with kids that they have a, a, a general wake-up time, like within a half an hour. So if you kind of work back from, like my daughter is in in-person school five days a week. Mm-hmm. So she needs to leave at eight. And even though it only takes her a few minutes to get dressed and eat and brush her teeth, she's She's very slow about it because yeah. she's seven and gets really distracted. Yeah. So I I set her little alarm clock to go off at seven. Yes. And so we have a full hour to do these three tasks that really would only take fifteen minutes. Smells, um, plays your dog. Yeah, or, like yeah. yeah, she wants time to talk to me about things and then, you know, probably play for a couple minutes and watch a show in the morning if she has time for a few minutes. So there's all these things I need to fit into an hour. Yes. And then on the weekends, she's still wakes up at seven. Yeah. Um, even if I turn her alarm off, her rhythm, I mean, granted, I'm a sleep consultant, so she's had right. been a great sleeper since <laughs> yes. forever. Um, so her rhythm is set. Like she is just up. Not to say that there haven't been times where she, you know, we go on vacation or away for the weekend and she stays up a little bit late. She'll sleep in a little bit late. Sure. Um, but that doesn't work so well with babies as we get older that our bodies can handle a little adjustment here and there. Yeah. But, you know, your kids, if they are going back to school in October. Hopefully. 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 Fingers crossed. um, Assuming everything's safe. um, You would, you can't just say, okay, you have school on Monday. Let's start a bed, like a good routine on Saturday. You would need to think about it at least a week ahead of time and start setting their schedules. Mm Mm-hmm. So, so kind of work backwards from, okay, are they taking the bus? If so, what time do we need to be out the door? How long does it take to do this? What time do they need to be up? And then you would base their bedtime on whenever they need to wake up. Okay. And assume they oh. need like 11 hours mm-hmm. at their age. Now, what about the parents who have the hybrid model for school? So 
you know, my kids are home five days, Finn is in school five days, but what about the kids that are in school two days and then home two days? Same. They need to be waking up within a half an hour of that. So let's say they have to leave for school at eight o'clock in the morning mm-hmm. when on days they go. Yeah. And then they don't have to log into their computer until nine or 10 o'clock on the days off. Or maybe it doesn't matter at all, depending on right. how their classes are scheduled sure. or how it's set up. Um, they still need to be waking up. Otherwise your body doesn't know, am I going to bed at nine and waking up at seven? Or am I supposed to stay up till 11 PM and wake up at eight or 9 a.m. Like right. you, you kind of, you just, it just needs consistency. Um, and the later you try to push it, usually the harder it is. Now there are some kids who are just like a night owl is a real thing. Yeah. Um, there are some kids who just, they function better going to bed later and waking up later. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, the school wake times um, aren't conducive to <laughs> those right. children. And, um, Teenagers are completely different animals in and of themselves because of all these hormone mm-hmm. hormonal changes. They actually need to stay up later and wake later, and, and it's the hardest on them. Later. Yes, and they they start earlier. And, I mean, there's all sorts of studies done about it, um, mm-hmm. documentaries, yeah. but they're suffering the worst. It's the hardest on them because they literally need that sleep later, and they're being forced mm-hmm. to get up earlier to be to school early to some sports practices or before school. Yes, um, swimming and- yeah. So it's really, really hard on them. And then we have parents saying, you know, you need to go to bed or you're being lazy or you're sleeping in too late. Their bodies actually physically need it. Like biologically, their brains need to sleep um, a little bit later. Yeah. So that gets tricky too. Now with sleep, obviously you give a lot of advice to parents with toddlers um, about limiting screen time and things before bed what is you know I'm so curious about the effect of like my kids being on tablets all day and how to transition out and I'm trying to give them breaks during the day and like go outside get away from the screen but there's whether they're on a zoom or they're doing homework on the computer Mm -hmm. it's so much computer time and my kids are like Montessori hands-on we use these tools in the classroom and now they're on little tablets doing I mean don't guilt yourself I mean there's nothing you can do about that right now it's their only way to learn um but you can buy blue blockers get them some glasses to wear and then giving breaks is good but then for the last hour before bed don't no screen time don't let them have any no tablet no Yeah. Because they're getting so much of it all day. Let's let their brain just kind of like rest and relax. That You know, even though that's the time of day when kids want to relax and watch a Mm -hmm. show. Um, You know, I have the luxury of doing that with my daughter because she's in school all day. So when we come home and we play and then eat dinner and then do bath and then it's like we chill out for a half an hour in front of the TV. And then she just kind of like that's her decompression time. But you have to figure out the opposite. So what can your kids do at night? Reading is great. Um, writing in a journal, like at Abby's age, she might mm-hmm. be into like write, that'd be a great journal writing time. Was like right before bed. Yeah, we do bath or shower time, and then quiet time in your room, and that's exactly what we do. Is like say, look at a book, mm-hmm. write something, draw a picture, do a puzzle, like, draw, write. yeah, like anything that just like brings your brain to that like focused on that one activity, and you're just it's calming and yeah. soothing good advice so any other tips for parents with school-age children and maybe even how to manage schedules if they have a newborn or toddler and I think just consistency is key I mean no matter what age your child and then parents too you know at the end of all my sleep consults once the baby is sleeping well now I'm like I'm not an adult sleep consultant but how are you guys sleeping Mm, Um, and it can take a while for parents sleep schedules to get back on track because they're used to waking every two hours all night long Mm -hmm. you know with their one-year-old so they've had a year of sleepless nights so it can take the and be patient be patient with your child be patient with yourself give your body that time to slowly adjust back into a normal sleep routine but even throughout all this virtual school stuff parents should have a set schedule too 
Yeah, and then we've got daylight savings. Ugh. Up, I just so. worked with a client in Arizona and so every client, every sleep plan has a um, daylight savings section Yeah, and they're like, well, we don't have to deal with that. I'm like, <laughs> right. oh gosh, you're so lucky. Why, why don't all 50 it. states just eliminate this? Oh. Because it's just awful. It's, it's awful on everybody. Yeah. And really hard to understand too. Like, do I go back? Am I going forward? How does like, how do, and then the same with that, I, a week ahead of time, prepare yeah. your child for, exactly. and that's coming up what, October 5th? I think it's early is this November. First, is it early November? Okay. Yeah. I want to say like November 1st or something. Yeah. I don't know why I was thinking October, but yeah, whenever it is just a week ahead of time, start transitioning your kid either an hour forward or back depending on, um, and I always try to yeah. post something on Instagram and Facebook about it because it's so confusing for parents to know which way they're supposed to be adjusting the schedule ahead of time. Right. So I guess I'll be doing that soon if that's coming up again soon. I'll probably get some blackout curtains and blinds because, yeah, those adjustments can be challenging. Yeah, keeping your room dark at night. Your body really changes, um, like, the wakefulness and sleep because of lighter darkness and then temperature changes. Yeah. So our body tends to warm up when we're going to wake up. So having a really warm room... I tell this to clients with babies too. If the room is really warm, that alone can cause wake ups because your body just gets too hot. Makes sense. Yeah. Nice cool I don't room. Want my room to be too warm at night. Well, thank you. Very yeah. helpful. So you've been listening to Ask the Doulas with Gold Coast Doulas. You can find us on our website at goldcoastdoulas.com, on SoundCloud and iTunes. These moments are golden. <laughs>